All right, guys, this is my 2003 Honda CR125 dirt bike. Um, we just acquired this machine over here in uh, Palmdale, California, from a good friend. Uh, gave us the, you know, homey hookup, if you will. We got it for $1,050. That's, I mean, it's good, you know, it's good. I'd say retail's about, you know, $1,500 to $2,000, so I, I think we did good. I want to say we did. Um, but, you know, it's a pretty good foundation for something, you know, to sort of build upon, you know, refurbish, if you will. Um, she's a little rough, you know, she's, she's had her use, um, her fair share of use. And, you know, she, she's got character, which is, you know, it's, it's some people like it, some people don't. Me, personally, I don't like it at all, not one bit. But, hey, you know, let's do a, let's do a quick walk around of the bike and kind of like document, you know, the steps to making it look like something that was not owned by an irresponsible adult. All right, let's do that walk around. Disconnecting you guys from the tripod. Okay. Okay, there you go. So here she is. Um, she's not too bad, you know. She could be better, but that could be said about many things. Um, oh, sorry. This is a 2003 model year. Um, this is the last year that they did not use the RC valve, which is essentially just a power valve, you know, helps out with bottom end. Check it out. 2003 CR125R. Um, you know, the plastics are okay. Um, you know, some of them are cracked, some of them are whole. You know, the seats have a couple little punctures and, you know, hot wheels. I mean, who doesn't like those, am I right? But, you know, things like the chain, you know, the chain, the chain is good. The sprockets are really good. Uh, the suspension needs some tweaking, actually. Uh, I'll, more on that in a bit. But like the wheels, the wheels are, you know, those are some pretty sexy wheels. Um, radiators, I mean, this bike, it's been dropped, so we're gonna have to straighten those out a bit. Um, handlebars, those are a different story. You know, and grips, you know, pink, because why not? You know, that's pretty manly, you know? Look at this one, this one's even more beautiful. Um, but you know, the brakes work and the levers are crooked. You know, as you can see, this one almost looks like an autistic banana, but that's okay. Um, let's keep, let's keep walking around, showing you the bike. You see the wheels are pretty good, you know, for being a 2003, it's, it doesn't seem to be too abused. Um, you know, it's, it's got scuffs everywhere, you know. This pipe is pretty rough. Uh, I'm not gonna lie there. It's it's pretty rough, you know, but uh, we, we, we might do something about that. Um, you know, it's, it's just the clutch cover. Everything's raw and good, pretty okay to good condition. Uh, you know, the fork seals are good. They don't leak, I, oh, spoke too soon. Minor leak, but nothing that will really affect the performance that much. Front wheel's pretty good. You know, front fenders. I mean, it's there, which, you know, is an advantage, you know. Um, there's more dents on the pipe, you know, so you can get the bigger picture. Um, but, yeah, overall, she's a, she's a pretty good, you know, foundation, like I mentioned earlier. And, um, you know, she could be better, but that could be said about many things in life. And, uh, excuse all the shaky movement and, you know, uh, unprofessionalism, if you will. This is my first time doing this, but yeah, I am going to make this thing look nice. And, you know, there's a lot of guys who say that, you know. And they do it, 
but they don't. You know, if that makes sense. You know, they claim that they're gonna make something look good, but the reality, you know, they don't do things right. They just kind of, you know, skip a step or two in the equation. And that's just not me. I'm kind of like a perfectionist, if you will. That's not really a perfectionist, but you know, the thing will be nice. Uh, we're gonna start by taking off these plastics. Um, you know, the seat, and taking off that carburetor because it leaks um, at a good amount. You know, I ask me how I know. Um, when I first brought the bike home, uh, I left it parked outside and, you know, totally forgot about the gas and a broken mistake, am I right? Um, you know, I forgot and about two gallons of fuel rate were wasted. So that kind of sucks, you know? That's, that sucks, but um, I've already changed the oil because uh, that thing was, like that oil was disgusting. It was, man, that was not oil, that was, it was tar in there. So it was pretty disgusting, you know? You can imagine, you know, use your imagination for a bit. Um, the air filter was pretty garbage, as expected with an neglected bike. Um, but overall, I mean, it's not too bad. I pressure washed it, so it's looking better than before. But we've got a lot of work ahead of us, and we're, we're gonna do this. We're gonna start by picking up the plastics. This is nice. Come check this out. Yeah, that's uh, I mean, you know, it's like, eh, it could be better. But this, you know, this was after me blasting it off, you know, just test riding it. So we'll get a new, uh, a new air filter in there. And, uh, you know, fix things a bit. <laughs> Um, there you go. Okay, and uh, we're also gonna remove these uh, these number plates because we don't want them here. They're a menace to society, and we cannot have them present. Um, my drill is dying, honey, you know, it's got that, uh, what do you call it, coronavirus, it's, you know, very popular right now here in California. Um, by the way, how weird is that, right? Stocking up on toilet paper because there's a virus outbreak, you know, isn't that weird? You know, I just came from uh, Long Beach, which, which is, you know, basically coronavirus central, and... That was pretty sketchy, um, but hey, you know, it's not too bad. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to remove the subframe, which isn't too bad. Um, should we remove the, yeah, we should remove the exhaust and that's an eight millimeter bolt. Ah, that shouldn't be too bad. Remove the subframe and then Yeah, that's gonna destroy my drill, so it's used a different, a proper tool. We need to get new tools. We need to get a, you know, <clears throat> there you go. We need to get a, you know, legit impact guns and all, all these fancy gadgets and gizmos, but you know, for now, <sighs> the old way will do, you know, with ratchets and sockets, you know, it'll do. Yeah, just 
breaking all these eight millimeter bolts loose. And then I'll hit them with the uh, hit them with the uh, little brushless Ryobi. Check this 
this out. This is aluminum. This probably weighs two pounds. Yeah, that's about two blocks of cheese that you would buy at the store. Pretty impressive if you ask me. Um, you know, so we'll disconnect. Uh, we're already disconnecting. The little clamp that goes on the intake boot that connects the boot to the carburetor. We get a Phillips screwdriver. Probably not the right side, but that's okay because, you know, we're semi perfectionist. Uh, and do a little bit of blind work here. Now I'm doing a little bit of the opposite of blind work. Hmm. This is weird. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a fill, oh, there you go. Got the sweet spot. But yeah, like I was saying, a CR85RB, man, that's a really good machine. I, you know, I, I've gotten gassed, as the youngsters say, um, or roasted for, you know, riding around in one of those things, but really, I've, uh, you know, I don't perform CR250s and quads, you know, that, that have more traction. You know, TRX 250Rs, you know, I've outperformed them, or if not outperformed, kept up with them, having a quarter, you know, or a third sometimes, the displacement. So that's, you know, that's pretty, that's pretty impressive, you know. And, you know, the top ends are also really cheap. You know, a whole top end runs you, you could do it all for 200 bucks with gaskets. So you can't beat it. Um, you just can't, you know, it doesn't matter what way you look at it, you just can't beat it. It's a really good deal, and everyone should be on CR85s, or if not, be on those, at least, you know, have them. That's, that's if you're, you know, a typical gentleman or young lady, that is conservative with their eating habits and does not weigh over 200 pounds, okay? Because if you weigh anything over 200 pounds, um, it's not gonna be a pleasant experience, really. Um, it's, not, it's not gonna be cool, you know? You're gonna bog it down a lot and, and you're gonna give up on dirt bikes or at least on those things. Tell people how much they suck, like people always do, you know, something doesn't work out for them. All of a sudden they uh, you know, talk bad about it and tell people their bad experiences, yada yada yada, go online, go on forums. It's not it's not, you know, if you get my point, it's not gonna be a pleasant experience. But I mean if that's the case, one of these things would work for you, okay? Anyone over 200 pounds that's just getting into dirt bikes. A CR125 would be amazing. And I'm you know I'm saying this from experience. I've ridden 250s, I have a service Honda CR500 in my backyard. Um, that thing's my baby. Um, but it's it's pretty much like you know, those bigger bikes, you don't really utilize the power to its full potential. You know, it's really just a bunch of wheel spin. And you know, who doesn't like that? It's it's cool, but it's not actually, you know useful um, unless your goal is of course to you know drift all over the place because then if that's your goal then yeah, by all means get yourself a you know a Polaris triple motor on a dirt bike or a Banshee you know stroker motor on one of these things or something that runs on alcohol and you know then you're gonna have some fun but yeah you know those bikes are pretty cool but man, a 125 and a uh, CR85, the RB model, this is important, this is actually pretty important. It's gotta be the RB model because, you know, if you're over five feet tall, you've gotta go with the RB. Anything else just doesn't make sense in my opinion. And, you know, it, it'll work, it'll work for you. Now, check this out guys, this is actually pretty, pretty weird. Um, can I take you over here so you can see this? Now, I was, I remember, uh, 
All right, I told you guys about you know an issue I had with the suspension. Um, well, every time I you know place the bike down, you know rest it on its own weight, it would make this weird noise, and I'd wonder like what is it? And do you notice something wrong with my spring? That is not supposed to be like that, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> Man, I could probably tighten this with my own. And, yep, and I can, and I will. <laughs> but let's, uh, let's get the trusty mir miracle sauce on there, because that is dirty. That's dirty. Miracle sauce, miracle sauce, miracle sauce. Oh, sorry. Get some of that miracle sauce on there. And some on the car, too. Just get it everywhere, man. Why not? Put the miracle sauce back. I buy miracle sauce by the gallon. And um, 